Now we are still looking at subsidiary journals, debtors, perpetual inventory, when we have markup on cost, and this is part two. Just a quick reminder of what we did in part one. I said there are certain things that you need to do before you even attempt the question, before you start. And what we did is we used different colors to identify the different transactions that must be recorded in the different journals. And the first journal we are going to look at is the debtors journal. And you will remember that uh, we looked for all the source documents that started with C, I, and V, as we were told. And we identified four of those. And now we are going to use that information to complete the debtors journal. So there's your, your debtors journal. And what the way I'm going to do it is I am going to do the calculations first, and then I'm going to transfer it to the physical journal. What I've done here is I've taken the given info again, and uh, if possible, I've just written it a little bit shorter so that we can save on space. So the first thing that we see here is that on the second, O'Clock, uh, he bought trading inventory from us. And now here we see something different. We know that the normal uh, markup policy, if we go back here, you will see, is 55% on cost. But now here they tell us that in his case, the markup was 55% on selling price. In other words, the gross margin was 55%. And then they give us the value of the stock that he bought inclusive of that. Now, so that entire amount there will be what we will record under our debtors control. Now, what we need to do is we need to calculate the sales by simply dividing with 1.15, and that will give us the sales amount. We divide it by 1.15 because our VAT is 15%, hence the 0.15, and then our VAT output would simply be the difference between those two amounts, like that. And now we've got to calculate our cost of sale. And this is how you will do it. So in this case, we have the sales amount and we know that our markup is 55% on selling price. So the idea there is that 55% of this price is gross profit. And if 55% is gross profit, then 45% of it will be our cost of sale. So what I did is I simply take our sales and I multiply it with 45% or 0.45, and that'll give me the answer there. The next one could be tricky, so pay attention. It does say, say here that we have sale of trading inventory. Um, it is marked at 21,317 Rand and 20 cent, but we are going to give a 7% trade discount. And now here, I want you to think logically with me before we do the calculation. The mere fact that you are giving somebody a discount does not affect your cost. Your cost is going to be the same. So you cannot calculate your cost of sale on your sales because your sales will reflect the 7% discount. So what we need to do first is we need to calculate what the VAT exclusive amount was before we gave the discount because that is what we will use to calculate our cost of sale. So if we have a look at that, the 21317 was given and we will divide that with 1.15 and we will get 18,536.7. That is the normal amount at which we would have sold it. Now we know that we are giving a 7% discount. Remember the discount is always based on the VAT exclusive amount. So here under sales, we are going to say, okay, uh, if I give somebody a 7% discount, they are going to pay 93% of the normal price or just 0.93% or 0.93. And therefore I say that amount that I've just calculated, they multiply it by 0.93 will give me 17,239. 
obviously we're going to multiply that with 15% to calculate our VAT. We're going to add the two to calculate the debtors control. And now we are going to use this sales amount here to calculate our cost of sales. And in this case, we are back to 55% on cost. So that price includes the markup of 55%, just like a VAT inclusive price includes the VAT of 15%. In this case, our markup is 55%. So we are going to divide this normal uh, sale with 1.55 and our cost of sale will therefore be 11959.16. The other two are quite straightforward. It is just simple sale of trading inventory. So those full amounts are going to be recorded under debtors control. We are going to divide by 1.15 to get the sales. The VAT will be the difference between the two amount. And as far as our cost of sale is concerned, it will simply be the sales divided by 1.55 again. Okay, exactly the same with the last one for F Opel. We record the full amount under debtors control. To get the sales, we divide by 1.15. The VAT output will be the difference between the two amount. The cost of sale will be the sales divided by 1.55. And now we've done all the calculations. And now that we've done it, we can simply go and complete our debtors journal. And you will see that now we actually have all the information that is required and we just need to transfer it. We have, we were given in the first case, a document number on the second. We know the date. We know that it is Clark. Don't worry about the folio because that will be done at month end only. Debtors control, we now record it from those calculations. Same with the VAT output, same with the sales, same with the cost of sales. And now you might ask me, when I did the calculations, I had debtors control, sales, VAT output. Now I have debtors control, VAT output and sales. The reason that we put this like this in the in the debtors journal is just because this is the order in which it was given in the question and so i am just making sure that i'm doing it in that order same with the next one we have the document we know that it happened on the 12th we know that it is hansen we had to calculate all these amounts and we started with the sales but now we can just simply bring them down because we've already done the calculations so whatever we have there we're just populating the columns now the third one is 481 and of course that's on the 19th for v nelson and uh, as I said to you, those transactions were pretty straightforward. You didn't even need to do the calculations beforehand. You could have just do the calc do the calculations and transfer it to your debtors journal directly. But I just just doing that for the sake of uh, neatness, really more than anything else. And now the last one, we record the document number, the date. We know that it is Opel. We know all these amounts because we've already calculated them. So we can just transfer them to the debtors journal. And now here is the sad thing. The sad thing is that sometimes I find students, they do everything correct. All the calculations were correct. And then they decide that uh, this they are going to give away one quarter of the marks because this is where they stop. Do not stop. Please remember that once you have put in all the numbers, you are supposed to total the accounts because it is these totals that you will use when you post to the general ledger at the end of the month. And not only must you add the totals, you must also say whether this account is going to be debited or credited. Now we know that debtors control is an asset account 
and asset accounts increases on the debit side. So this account will be debited. And because really this amount here makes up the other two, these two will obviously be credited. And if sales is credited and cost of sales is the contra account of sales, then obviously the cost of sales will be debited. And that is how you complete the debtor's journal. Thank you.